like Jeremy said, I'm an application engineer out of the St. Louis office on the hardware team. So I work with 3D printing as well as 3D scanners. I used to do a little bit of SOLIDWORKS as well, but I uh, have recently moved away from that. So today uh, we're going to be talking about streamlining 3D printing and logistics with RapCAD Shop. And this is a, a new solution that Stratasys is introducing to basically uh, simplify some of the workflow around 3D printing. So it, it's pretty handy. All right, so this is what I'm going to be talking uh, through today. So first off, we're going to talk about the workflow of 3D printing or a model shop. We're not going to be you know, talking about the technology of 3D printers and things like that. This is mostly about the, the workflow, the process to go from plans to final product. Then we're going to talk about some of the hiccups and headaches that can appear in the, the workflow. Then the, the problem, the boiled down essence of what this is trying to solve. And then we're going to talk about that solution being GrabCAD Shop. And then we're going to go through some of the features of this solution from Stratasys. So the workflow for uh, 3D printing when you have a designated workshop for it, and you're not just one person running your machine yourself, is kind of like this. So the engineer or designer is going to make their, their CAD model or whatever model they're trying to print, and then they're going to send it to the operator. The operator is then going to print it or manufacturing it using another machine if necessary. They're going to do some sort of post process and then they're going to deliver the part to either the engineer designer or the end user customer. And now this, this seems to be a pretty simple workflow, but once you start having multiple people all trying to work with the operator as a single point of contact for the workshop and different ways that they're communicating, you can run into a bunch of little things that can point their little heads in and be kind of annoying. I call those hiccups and headaches. So first off, the CAD model, is it even printable? Does it make sense to print it on a 3D printer as opposed to using some other technology. How is the file sent? Is it emailed? Is it put on a drive somewhere? Is it just you know someone walking into the shop with a flash drive and saying, hey, I, I need this? And then where is it located when the, the operator needs to go back and find it? Is it you know, saved off on his computer somewhere? Did he leave it as an attachment on an email or something like that? Looking for that can be, you know, a problem in the future. What technology is a, a huge important uh, factor when you have multiple different types of printers. Some printers are better for functional prototypes, while some are more just for display pieces. You know, full color reality with your polyjet versus FDM with the toughness. What material and colors are needed? Is there a special post process that it needs like a clear coat, sanding, painting, or vapor smoothing? And then when is the part needed? Who is it delivered to? Is it delivered back to the engineer or does it have to go to a customer somewhere, uh, you know, offsite? These are all things that might not necessarily be conveyed in the initial communication from the engineer or designer. And then whenever the operator needs to find these things out, you're adding just one more thing that they need to keep track of to make sure that the products are uh, delivered properly and on time. So instead of just being that, that one point from the operator to the, or the, the engineer to the operator, you're more often going to find that the workflow kind of looks like this where it's multiple people using multiple different ways of communication through the operator to work with multiple different types of manufacturing, whether it be different technologies of printing or other 
technologies like CNC or laser cutting and things like that. So in this situation, we've got uh, one engineer that's emailing a part saying, print two of these. You don't have any information on what the requirements of that, that part are, just that you need to. Well, you know, that, that could be fine. And then you got a designer saying, we need three of these, sparse. Okay, so that's probably, you know, a, an FDM part, but you don't know what the material requirements or anything like that are. And then at the end, you got a, an engineer rushing into the, the shop with the USB drive. Hey, I need 10 of these fast and, uh, you know, just make them all different colors. Well, what colors? What materials? Is it, you know, all different FDM prints? Or is it just a one job polyjet deal? So there's a whole bunch of different things that the operator needs to keep track of. And when all of these are coming at the same time, you can slow down the process. And what Stratus has found is that the real problem is that there is a 15% time waste per week tracking down work order requirements and communicating statuses between engineers, designers, and the operators. That's six hours a week. And not only is that for the operator themselves, but it's also shared to the engineers and designers as well, who then have to respond to the, the operator's questions or if they, uh, they don't have the ability to communicate with them immediately, it can cause delays on their parts. So it may cause a reprints due to improper requirements. Maybe they printed on the wrong material or wrong color. And worst of all, you might just miss that deadline. Maybe someone doesn't tell you exactly when they need it and you know, it goes by and you don't have that part ready. So the solution that they came up with is grab CAD shop. And so the main tenets of it really are to manage orders, bring everything in one central place where you can manage different shops with different orders and different technologies all in one spot. It's gonna help improve communication and collaboration between the operator and the engineers and designers so that you're going to get the most out of each print and project. And best of all, you don't need any program installs or updates and things like that. It's all online and a cloud-based system that makes the convenience just next level. So it makes it really easy to uh, manage your different work orders all in one place. You can very easily customize your different shops based off of what technologies you have, where you are, and give different people different accesses and permissions based off of different locations. It makes it very easy to update the engineers and designers on what's going on with their project automatically, as well as via chat. And then you can also add notes. So from the beginning, the, the operator will know exactly what they need to deliver at the end of this order. So it's an extremely convenient way to streamline this process and eliminate some of those hiccups and headaches that the operator and workflow can go through. So now we'll just look at uh, some specific features pretty quick. Uh, these are just kind of screenshots and uh, renderings, and uh, I'll talk about what's going on here. So here is an example of having multiple different shops based off of uh, different locations. So this Acme company has a site in the USA, as well as Brazil, but then they also have an offshoot uh, company uh, in the health industry. So you can have different shops with uh, different machines and access so that if you need to outsource to a different building or, or different site even, you can very easily do that in one place using uh, this interface. 
and you can very easily set different permissions per user so that one person can be the operator for a, a given shop and then some people can be just uh, submitting jobs or you could have multiple uh, operators all working through different sites to make sure that all the projects are properly uh, being taken care of. So very handy there. You could have a whole bunch of different machines per, per shop, which is extremely handy. And not only does it have a whole bunch of Stratasys and other 3D printing brands, pre-made profiles in there so that you can easily set those up but you can also use other types of machines, like here they have a CNC machine as well as a laser cutter. So not only are you being able to streamline your 3D printing workflow, but you're also going to be able to streamline the rest of your model shop's uh, workflows as well. And then you can easily display uh, what capabilities you have for different machines whether it be different materials or build sizes and things like that. Next up, if we look at the, the order page, for the operator, it's very easy to organize each order as they come in by project name, ID number, who requested it, and you can see what the status is for each of these parts, as well as when they're, they're needed by. So you can very easily sort and find what the extremely rushed projects are that you need to get done today, as opposed to the parts that, you know, maybe you can print those in between other more important uh, prints. So very handy and it's very transparent uh, to the, the engineer designer because as these things change, they are updated as well. So like I was saying, uh, you can set different progresses for each part as well as each project. So uh, some might be simple. Maybe you only have one of part number four down there and you can print that out and, and be ready to go you know, on Monday but the others you have to do maybe more post-processing or maybe they're just longer prints or they don't fit on the, the build tray or something like that. But you can set different progresses as well as different requirements for each part. And it easily keeps track of all those for you for each project. And then when the operator updates those uh, different parts, it will update the the engineer or designer automatically so that they know exactly what's going on with their project as they go. Now that, that's, that's super valuable just to eliminate the guesswork and then it also eliminates the operator from having to you know, stop what they're doing, make sure they go to email to make sure that they've updated the engineer if there's you know, a delay or something like that. This just allows them to keep their nose to the grindstone and stay focused on you know, what they really care about, which is delivering the parts on time and of high quality. And then there's also a comment section that exists for each of, uh, each of the projects so that the, the operator and the engineer designer and communicate. So this way it'll have it timestamped so you know exactly who's saying what when. And this is great to keep all the correspondence about a given project in one place. And now that that may not sound you know super handy, you know, email works fine. You know, I can just call them and and have my operator know exactly what I need. But you know, you have to remember that they could potentially be working on four different projects all at the same time, and maybe they won't be able to get to yours until, you know, next week or something like that. And making sure that everything's kept track of 
is extremely important and it you don't have to end up going back to the engineer designer and, and asking what the requirements were again or spend time looking through your records hoping that you'll uh, you'll find your notes from before so all of these things together really make grabcat shop a great solution for your small to medium sized uh, workshops that don't have some sort of system to uh, properly uh, keep their logistics in check. So if any of these features seem like they could be a, a good fit for you, whether you're a small uh, workshop or a prototype shop for a larger company, maybe you have different shops in on different buildings or different sites around the country, or if you're someone like a school who has you know a hundred different students that are all submitting projects this is uh, invaluable really to keep the or the operator sane and organizing all the work that needs to be done so if any of these things sound good to you please reach out to your hardware aes or uh, sales folk so that they can start the conversations with you to see, you know, if this would actually be a good fit for you. Um, Jeremy, at, at this point. Uh, nothing at the moment, um, but uh, so we took our CATI took part in uh, a consortium of printing owners mm -hmm. early on in the lockdown by printing out the, the face shields. Uh, for hospitals and that that's uh, you know as a bridge to production until you know we had new molds made and all that can you speak to that a little bit and how that helped us out and organize all the orders we had yeah absolutely so at CATI we have uh, printers and offices all around the country uh, in St. Louis we have four machines currently five machines we just got a new one um, and we know the Buffalo Grove has a handful uh, I know you've got a couple, and then I know, you know, Pleasant Ridge has a few, Denver has a few. So being able to track these large projects that need to be split up over, you know, a whole bunch of different offices, it was a uh, very handy. Um, that, that's a great example um, in particular, because it was something that uh, we were trying to work remotely uh, not only in terms of our national space, but also per office. So uh, keeping track of which operators have done what, uh, which operators have access to which tools, and being able to keep, uh, keep everyone updated with how our progress is going is, you know, extremely valuable because, you know, people are trying to stay home when they can and being able to make sure that they're updated so they know when to come into the shop or come into the office rather uh, to either get their parts or know that things are being shipped out is is extremely handy um, and it, it's really just a, a good general tool uh, to make sure that you know everything everyone rather is being kept sane um, especially in you know these difficult times but even in just normal operations, you know, any any sort of wasted time that you can get rid of, any little hiccups in your workflow, and being able to keep track of everything is, you know, extremely valuable. Got it. Uh, so I have a couple more questions coming in. Um, is there any limitations on what makes or brands of printers or technologies? Uh, I know you mentioned uh, CNC machines and laser cutters. You know, for instance, could we use desktop metal or, you know, can we set up custom machines? Absolutely. Uh, so they, they like to call uh, this program technology agnostic. So any, any printer, whether it be from different brands or even other machines like CNC's or uh, mills, lathes, laser cutters, what have you, you can set up profiles for each one uh, and have each one be requestable uh, for work. And so it's, it's very easy to 
create those within your individual shops and keep track of those and have those be uh, available to uh, the users. Uh, so the software itself, is this a, a cloud-based system or do they have a, a local cloud available like they, they have done with some other systems? Like can we store it on a, a local server, for instance? They do have, um, I believe it all is all uh, cloud-based, but they do have uh, different levels of security for different types of users, I believe. So that way, if you do have requirements for uh, confidential confidentiality reasons or uh, or classifications, uh, you can talk with them and work at a security level that is appropriate for your business. Uh, is there any reporting that you you have access to, uh, like uh, maybe jobs by process or quantity or stuff like that? Uh, you can uh, within the list of orders, you can sort it by uh, by machine, by uh, status, by uh, material, all, all these different things. So you can definitely um, sort and, and find uh, different jobs based off of the requirements that are, are given. Okay, and could you like export like a spreadsheet or CSV file or anything like that? That I'm not exactly sure about. Um, I haven't done it personally, uh, but if you uh, if you want to shoot us an email, uh, we can look up that for you and uh, and answer that for you. I've got another question asking: Do the STL files get submitted directly to GrabCat Shop? In other words, are they stored on the cloud? Yes, so they are uh, stored uh, in the cloud. You can. As you submit your part uh, files, whether they be STLs, OBJs, VERMLs, or even uh, native CAD files, you can uh, submit any of those to your order and they will be listed there uh, if I go back, uh, just like you see there. So uh, in this picture, they have uh, a solid part, a VERML, STP, and an STL all uh, within the same order and they're all listed there and saved on the cloud so that the operator uh, can download them whenever they need so they don't have to uh, you know worry about having a million folders on their computer and trying to sort through uh, all those different parts I've got a question that came through through the Q a um, is it possible to send up somebody as an approver to kind of like a, a gate like a stop gate in the process yeah, so uh, the, the way I would probably do that would have uh, that person be uh, set up as an operator, uh, quote unquote, and they could be, uh, if, you, if you look in the order status uh, right here uh, on this slide, you can see that there is options for uh, submission and review and approved. So you could just have two operators, one of which is, you know, your, your administrator, I guess, and they would do the review and approval of different projects. And then once the other operator who is actually doing the, the printing and the manufacturing sees that projects are approved, they can then pick it up. Again, this is all within uh, the same window and same list that uh, they would have access to. So you're able to uh, collaborate between different operators uh, at, uh, very easily. So that's probably how I would do it. Just have two different um, operators, one that works on the review and approval, and then one that works on the uh, actual manufacturer. So somebody's asking about a, an in-house demo. I, I, I'm not totally sure how that works out. Do you know, Nathan? Um, I believe uh, we, we do do um, demos. Uh, we can work with uh, Stratasys to uh, to get one of those set up. Um, a lot of it, I believe, is presentation. You know, a little much more in depth 
uh, than what I'm showing today. This is mostly just, you know, an introductory um, uh, presentation, uh, but we do do uh, demos. Uh, at the moment, I'm not so sure about, um, about on-site, you know, based off of the, the current uh, climate, but we do do demos. We may have to do, you know, a WebEx demo or something like that, but uh, reach out to your salesperson and, and we can uh, get you covered. Yeah, like, is there a calendar view? So you can kind of look and see when things are due based on a calendar? I don't believe so. Okay, but you can sort jobs by due date, more or less, right? So you can yes. get a list. By submittal date or uh, due date, as well as completion date. Okay. Uh, are the parts stored indefinitely, or is there like a, an expiration date you can set for them? How is that handled? That I'm... Uh... I'm honestly not sure. I haven't uh, had to to work with that personally. Um, this one thing uh, that is important to note is that this is a relatively new uh, solution by Stratasys, and they are constantly updating it. So if there is a, a feature like that calendar view or um, a a timeout on availability for uh, Parts maybe, you know, after your project's done, you know, maybe two days later, you want it to time out. Uh, if it's not currently in the application, uh, please, you know, either talk to us or, or talk to Stratasys and we can, uh, we can see if that can be implemented in one of our, uh, one of their, their future updates to the, to the program. Wow, we've got a lot of questions. I think uh, this is more questions than I've had in any other uh, presentation we've done. I know, it's good. <laughs> People are interested. <laughs> yeah, uh, so another question. Um, like, if you had a part and you wanted one part solid and one part sparse, like, how would you take care of having one part built multiple ways? Yeah, so uh, the most simple way to do that would be to, uh, you know, say, I want this part printed, say, your quantity two. And then I would probably just put a comment, say one sparse, one uh, solid, or something like that. Or you can uh, submit, you know, two different parts, uh, you know, quantity, each quantity one, and then just set uh, different requirements uh, for those as you're submitting it. Um, there, there's a lot of different options that it prompts you for as you, uh, as you. Uh, uh, set up your your request your order uh, so there's a bunch of different options that uh, it asks you for so that it knows exactly uh, what you want by the time it gets to the operator so you could either set it up by uh, two different parts essentially with two different requirements or just say this part i want two of them and then have a comment in there saying one uh, sparse and one solid for example Um, do you know much about how it's licensed? Like, uh, it seems like I'm, I'm remembering like, uh, like you, it's a 10 pack, like 10 users or something or a hundred users or. Yeah, I believe it, it comes in. It's basically like a, a network, uh, license type deal where you can have a, a certain number of users. I think it's like 10, 25, like 50, a hundred, um, or something like that where uh, it goes like that and then it's a subscription based uh, access uh, deal so it's not a uh, buy it once have it forever uh, it's a it's something that you would pay a subscription based uh, a subscription based uh, model uh, to keep the the access well, I think we've got them all. Um, we have a, a comment that you know having some report outs uh, would be very ben beneficial. And we definitely, I definitely agree with some of that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, we'll we'll pass that on. We'll pass your your um, your thoughts on. And uh, within GrabCat itself, there's a way to give feedback on the software. So I'm I'm assuming that there's a bit a way to do that with. Uh, grab cab shop as well to to give your feedback if there's uh, improvements that you like enhancement request mm -hmm. uh, you know if you do find a bug yeah and and if you don't uh, you can't manage to find that again you know pass it on to um, 
either your your local hardware AE that you know you may know or uh, reach out to your sales rep and they can uh, find who to talk to uh, at Stratasys for you. Sure. All right. Well, um, let us know. Um, thank you, Nathan, for the presentation. Yeah, follow um, us on uh, Facebook, on, on YouTube. Uh, we got blogs on our website. Uh, Dustin, you're asking uh, if you can get the presentation. It will be on, uh, it will be posted on YouTube. Uh, so you can uh, follow us at, I believe it's CATI channel on YouTube and uh, it will be posted up there soon. Okay, so uh, with that, we'll, we'll call it a uh, close. Everybody have a great day. Stay safe. Yep, absolutely. Thanks.